Good morning, and thanks again for joining me today at Tony Romaco Ministries as we continue our talk on the book of Revelation. The next step we're going to talk about is the letter to the leader of the church in Pergamos. Jesus tells John to say this, This is from him who wields the sharp and double-bladed sword. I am fully aware that you live in the city where Satan's throne is, at the center of satanic worship, and yet you have remained loyal to me and refused to deny me, even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred among you by Satan's devotees. And yet I have a few things against you. You tolerate some among you who do as Balaam did when he taught Balak how to ruin the people of Israel by involving them in sexual sin and encouraging them to idol feast. Yes, you have some of these very same followers of Balaam among you. Change your mind and attitude or else I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Let everyone who can hear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Everyone who is victorious shall eat of the hidden manna, the secret nourishment from heaven. And I will give to each a white stone, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one else knows except the one receiving it. Jesus, in his message, to the leader of the church in Pergamos is just as detailed and clear-cut as the other ones. The bottom line message Jesus is giving here is simple. I know, I see, and I hear what you're doing. I know what you did, and I know what you will do. Again, he tells them, as he told in the previous letters, the other leaders, he tells this one as well. Change your attitude. You do well, you do good. I know the good you've done, but you've also done this. Change that. In telling them what he's telling us to do today, don't be half-hearted. You can't serve two kingdoms. Either you serve God and Jesus or you serve Lucifer. You have to choose one. You can't choose God on occasion when it suits you and Jesus and then choose Lucifer on the other occasion when it suits you. It doesn't work that way. You have to make your choice which is free will. And when you choose you have to be wholeheartedly with that choice you make. You can't be wishy-washy or sitting on the fence so when you choose Jesus, which I pray you all do, and take him into your heart as your Savior, you got to change your attitude. By doing that, Jesus is saying, even in this letter, all those thousands of years ago, is that ask him for the strength to change. But if you're going to follow him, you got to do it 100%. The manna he's talking about is the nourishment from heaven. Remember what Jesus said, those who drink of the water and eat of the food I give them will have eternal life and eternal wisdom. He's talking about himself. He is eternal life, eternal wisdom. And that the stone with the new name, that's between Jesus, the Father, and the person they give that to. That's an honor to receive that. And we should all strive to receive that honor and to make our Lord happy. And by following Him and doing what He says, remember what God the Father had said. This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. Hear Him. Jesus is the voice, so whatever he tells us we should do. He is the only way 
the only bridge into heaven so when he says change the attitude if you're going to follow me I adhere to that and change the attitude and the tone and the tune and this is what he's saying in this letter as he said in the other ones and the other one as I just mentioned before we will get a little bit repetitive as I will in other sermons he always sees that's what he's saying and he's also saying in this letter as he tells us what you do for others you do for me so we got to really pay attention to this and I want to thank you again for joining us today as we completed this letter and the next sermon we're going to talk about the letter to the leader of the church of Thyatira as we continue on on the book of Revelation and please go out there be true followers spread the light and as you see and know the more you spread the light Jesus' light there'll be no darkness it fades away and that's what this world needs today and it is happening more and more people are turning back to God they're turning back to Jesus by their own free will and accepting him as their Savior and I pray that those who haven't yet do so so please look at the others that have Jesus in their life and how they have changed uh, you can look at me or and all the other ministers who were on the dark side and went through a troubling life here and there and had our ups and downs and when we actually accepted Jesus in our heart and questioned him in our life and, and our decision making you could see how everything changes and yes I will tell you there are still more trials and tri tribulations but Jesus did tell us that that there will be so he didn't make any promises like there wouldn't be but the promise he did make which he is keeping is that he will walk with us through each storm every step of the way pointing the right direction to go and by involving him in all our decision making he will help us with the answers we seek thanks again for joining me and please continue to walk in God's presence you'll be glad you did have a blessed week